Hello and welcome to my introduction to Service and Dynamics 365. My name is Ryan Talsma, CRM Product Manager here at Interdyne BMI. The purpose of this video will be to provide an introduction to the core entities within the service module of Dynamics 365, specifically those revolving around case management. The intended audience would include individuals who are brand new to Dynamics 365 and are interested in how the service module can help you provide exceptional customer service to your customers. Specifically, I will be covering the account, contact, cases, and queues entities. Beyond these entities is a very expansive platform that includes much more functionality. However, these entities are the basis of the customer service module within Dynamics 365. So with that, let's navigate to our first entity within the customer service module, and that's accounts. What we're currently looking at is the active accounts view. This shows a list of all the accounts in the entire system. I'll go ahead and open one up. Think of accounts as the customers and vendors that you work with. This is the top level record which you can use to track numerous pieces of valuable information such as their name, key contact information, details about the size of the customer, as well as recent activities that have either taken place in the past or need to occur in the future. And when I mention activities, I'm talking about things such as phone calls, tasks, emails, etc. You can also track contacts, and these are the individuals that work at the given account. Additionally, you can track service cases that have recently taken place, along with entitlements and contracts that are valid for this given account. And keep in mind that any record within Dynamics 365 can be easily configured to fit your specific business needs by rearranging and adding new fields to the forms. So with that, let's go ahead and navigate to our next entity, and that's Contacts. Upon navigating to the Contact entity, I'm presented with the Active Contacts view. This is a list of all the customers in the entire system. You can think of this as your virtual phone book. I also have the ability to search for specific contacts, such as Cat Francis, who is the primary contact at Coho Winery, the account we were on. I'll go ahead and open this record up. So now let me show you some of the information stored in the contact record such as details specific to the contact itself, including their name, job title, key contact information, as well as the ability to relate the contact to its parent account, or in other words, the company that it works for. Similar to the account, we have the ability to manage activities, such as phone calls, tasks, and emails. Also, we have the ability to track recent cases and recent opportunities if you have the sales module. That's about as far as I'm going to go into context, so with that, let's go ahead and move to our Cases entity. What we're looking at now is the My Active Cases view. This shows a view of all the cases that are owned specifically by me. Similar to the account and contact, we do have the ability to see active cases, which shows all cases in the entire system, regardless of who the owner is. I'm going to switch back to My Active Cases and open one of these records up. When we're talking about cases, we use the term case as a broad label that encompasses any type of customer issue or request. The case entity allows us to track the incident or ticket from beginning to end, showing all communication and actions that took place in resolving the case. Cases can be owned and worked on by individuals or teams. Within the case record, we have the ability to provide an interactive guided business process flow outlining a step-by-step -step incident resolution process to fit your specific needs. We also have the ability to capture key information on the case, such as the customer account, primary contact, subject of the case, how the case was received, case priority, description, etc. We also have the ability to track all communication that took place, and we've seen this on the account and contact records as well, but you can add phone calls and tasks, emails, whatever methods of communication you used to help resolve this case. However, unlike the account and contact records, the case record has KB records, also known as knowledge base articles. These knowledge base articles pull up automatically based off of your case title. If we're not finding the records that we need, we can simply change the search. Also shown on the case form are response and resolve times, which if you have an SLA record set up, will automatically populate these fields. Additionally, you can see the entitlement contract that was set up for this record which tracks the number of service cases Coho Winery is entitled to, as well as automatically reduces the remaining terms by one upon resolution of the case. So the final entity I'm going to talk about is queues. And at the top of this record, you can see I have the ability to add it to a queue. This allows me to assign it to my own personal queue, a team member's queue, or a queue managed by multiple team members. 
Since this is already added to my personal queue, I'm simply going to navigate to my queue to see a list of all the items that I have to work on. Think of queues as a container that stores all of the tasks that are assigned to you. Specific to the service module, this would be the ability to track tasks as well as entire cases to be worked on. Every user in Dynamics 365 has a personal queue created for them automatically. However, users can also be a member of other queues managed by multiple individuals such as escalation queues, subject matter queues, and expert queues. Currently we're looking at my own personal queue. However, I can navigate to Tier 1 Support, another queue that I'm a member of that's managed by multiple members of our team. You can see I'm currently working on this item here. However, if I want to add another item to my list, I can simply select it click pick and then pick again and once this is done processing you'll see it's now being worked by me if I want to see a list of all the queues that I'm a member of at the same time I can click this and I can see all the items in my personal queue as well as the other queue that I'm a member of upon completion of a case it's then removed from my queue the last thing I'm going to show you that while we're working on these cases it's building automatic reports within our dashboards these dashboards can be configured for individuals as well as management. This is the customer service representative dashboard, which shows a compilation of reports specific to what I need to know as a customer service rep in my company, including what's new on the records I follow, a list of activities I have to complete, as well as key metrics that allow me to make informed decisions when prioritizing my cases. Again, these dashboards are very customizable to every individual within your company, whether they are a customer service rep or the CEO. So that concludes my introduction to service in Dynamics 365. If you're interested in Dynamics 365 and would like to learn more, don't hesitate to reach out to us in the information provided within the description. If you would like to know more about Interdyne BMI, feel free to check out our website. To see more CRM-specific content, visit letstalkcrm.com where we continually post new content related to Microsoft Dynamics CRM as well as Dynamics 365. If you'd like to be kept up to date on when I post my newest videos or release blog posts, I encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as follow me on Twitter. Thanks for watching again. If you would like to know more, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Have a great day.